Calshi is an American prediction market that offers event contracts, i.e. it allows you to speculate on the outcome of economic, political, and cultural events. For example, what will the S&P 500 price range be at the end of the year? How many times will the Fed cut rates in 2024? What will be the game of the year? I was intrigued by this particular uh, market uh, when I watched this video on YouTube on how two ex-poker players became full-time traders on Kaoshi. And it's kind of an interesting story there. One of the guys uh, worked at some trading firm and one is a software developer and they used to be poker players, you know, and, and they're interested in games of chance and probability. And they decided to get together and figure out if they could um, automate some systems to trade on uh, these prediction markets. And so uh, they got their start here on Kaoshi. And their thought was that since it's kind of a, a newer thing, this prediction market thing, that there's less people there. And so when there's less people in that market, there might be some opportunities to uh, exploit there. And I think they were making tens of thousands of dollars on this or something like that. I'm not sure exactly how much. And um, yeah, it made me think like I'm interested in markets and development, software development. So it's just something I can do. What are they doing on here? And, you know, it's just a little retirement hobby I could take up or something like that. And so uh, I have a friend over in Germany uh, who is also interested in this topic. And we've been uh, collaborating and experimenting on these prediction markets like Polymarket, which I discussed in the last video. And I thought we would do a comparison between the markets and observe the behavior between them. So similar to Polymarket, Calshi has an API, meaning you can program it so we can programmatically uh, get events and market data. We're able to get trades, look at the order book, uh, get some historical data. We're, we're able to authenticate and even programmatically uh, place trades on our account. Uh, we can look uh, at our portfolio and monitor it. And so we can do this with a REST API. And there's also a WebSocket API where we can uh, monitor all of these uh, trades and market data in real time. But unlike Polymarket, uh, it's actually regulated and legal in the United States. So uh, I have an account on here and I actually had to do uh, KYC, know your customer. So I had to submit my ID and prove I am who I am and, and so forth. And there's probably certain types of bets that you can't make uh, on Kaoshi. So um, a benefit of Kaoshi is I can actually, I actually have an account with money in it and I can uh, place trades right now. And it's, you know, fully regulated and legal in the United States. And I'm unsure about the legality of Polymarket, like which countries you can use it in and so forth. And Polymarket has a more, uh, a crypto element to it. Whereas Kaoshi, I just can uh, put some, I can connect it to my normal bank account and put some fiat currency uh, in there. And so that's one of the major differences there. However, Polymarket seems to be a bit more, uh, has a lot more volume right now. So there's probably, it's probably like at least 10 times the size and it's a little more trendy right now. Uh, Kaoshi doesn't seem to be as popular lately. Like when you see all the election odds coming up, on TV and on Twitter, they seem to be referencing a poly market, and I'm not sure why that is. And so, uh, yeah, my friend and I have been kind of looking through um, different aspects of the APIs of both of these uh, markets, and you know, looking at you know what are the fees on each system, what are the odds uh, if you have the same bet on each uh, of these prediction markets, what what are the odds on them? How quickly do these odds move and react to real time data? If I look at traditional market data, for instance, of you know, what traditional market data might say the price of the uh, S&P 500 will be at the end of the year. You know, what does that say versus what are the odds on here? Um, yeah, there's a lot of interesting things uh, you can think of here. And so uh, we have like tons of different note, like dozens of notebooks at this point, uh, and we're hacking around right now and we're put it, putting together our thoughts. Um, you know, you can see here we have this, uh, you know, this is a little uh, embedding model here and we got all the different bets on, on each market and we're using semantic matching. So the wording is different between uh, each of these markets. So when they when they list the Fed rate cut bets, for instance, you know, the wording is a little bit different. And so one thing you might want to do is load in all the bets and then, you know, find similar bets across both markets. So for instance, uh, this row, we're like aggregating all of the uh, payroll bets, for instance, you'll see Will there be a new albums by Beyonce? Uh, will China invade Taiwan? So there's like similar similar bets across all of these different markets. And yeah, there's tons of ideas we have here that uh, I'll talk about. 
But first, before we get all complicated, we gotta start uh, with the basics of the API here, and then we'll build up uh, slowly. And also, if you're watching out there, uh, I'm curious, is this a topic that's actually interesting to you? Me and my friend, were, we've been wondering, like, is this something like super niche and nerdy that we're into and no one else is into? Or is it popular right now because of the elections and it'll kind of fizzle out? Uh, let me know what you think or how are you finding this video? Because I haven't actually seen a lot of people on YouTube discussing this topic and I can't tell that if that's because it's super niche and not many people know about it or if it's something that will be big in the future. So sometimes I talk about things that become more popular uh, later on. I can't tell if it's just early or if there's just not that many people interested in this stuff. So let me know what you think in the comments there. Okay, uh, but yeah, let's let's get started. So uh, the first thing we wanna do is figure out how to get all the events on Cauchy. And so um, an event would be like uh, what the S&P 500 price range is at the end of the year. And then a market would be each one of these yes, no uh, bets right here. So the event is like a grouping of markets. So these are markets and this is the overall event. Very similar, the same thing as poly market. And so what I'm gonna do is figure out how to call this get events here. You see they have an endpoint, so it's trade API v2. Uh, they also have a Python SDK here, and so that's not the Python SDK. You can find that on the Python package index, but really all you need to do is make an HTTP request to this endpoint for the events, and then it gives you a JSON response. Uh, super simple there. And so in the collab here, which I have linked below, you can follow along, uh, all free stuff here, and then I can run this. You can click the play there, you can run this, uh, the request library is built into Google Colab already. It requests that events uh, endpoint and you see the JSON response here. And so you'll see um, an event. How high will the inflation level get in 2024? How many companies will go bankrupt? New Supreme Court justice confirmed in 2024. And you know, there's all kinds of events on here, new Rihanna album. And if you have some inside knowledge of these and you see the odds don't match up with what you know, then you know this is this can be something that is profitable for you. Now, um, you can do this manually on the web, but this is a technology channel, so we focus on the programmatic aspects of this. And so uh, I'm gonna scroll down and you can see we have this big long JSON list. I'm not interested in every single bet on here right now, at least not yet. Uh, we'll talk about batch processing in a moment. Uh, but let's say we have all these events, they're in a list, and I want to just filter them down. And so I just want the ones, you see how each of them has a, a title here. So there's an Emmy Award one. I wanna filter this down and just show ones where Fed is in the title and rate is in the event title. And if I run this, you'll see I just get a list of events um, all related to uh, the uh, Fed funds rate after each meeting. So uh, we have a bunch of Fed events um, and then you can see, you know, you can bet on December, October, September, each meeting, right? Even going through uh, 2025, right? So that's how you get the overall events, but how do you get the markets underneath those events? Well, either you can call the uh, get markets uh, endpoint right here to get the markets, or under this get events, you'll notice you can pass an extra parameter called with nested events, and it'll nest in that JSON the events that are grouped under that market, right? Or the markets that are grouped under that event. So I can call this to get the events and then have it nest uh, these markets underneath it. And so you see there's actually uh, like 15 or so markets here. And you see there's low probabilities that the S&P 500 is gonna be in the 3000. So if you're some bear doomer, you can make that bet now and it has dramatic upside, but the likelihood of the S&P crashing 40% or whatever are very low. Uh, most likely people are expecting uh, it to be above uh, 5,800 right now. So there's 46% odds uh, right there. So, you know, that's a, that's a bet you might wanna make. Uh, it, you might wanna bet against uh, the S&P 500 being uh, above 5,800 if you're more bearish. So in order to pass this parameter, we just make the same request to events and then we have a query string parameter with nested markets equals true. Uh, I'm just gonna filter on the status. So I'm gonna get the open events and I'm gonna limit it to 200 events. So what it does is give you a page of events. So there might be like 10,000 events and it only gives you 100 of them at a time by default. Um, so I'm gonna uh, specify 200 and you can only get up to 200 at a time. And so what I did here is loop through all the events, right? If fed and rate is in the title. And so you'll see, since I included with nested markets, you'll see when I print out the event here, you see there's a markets key there that I can access that has a list of the markets for that event. And so you see I'm looping through the events and then I'm looping through that key called markets and printing out the markets. And so you see for the uh, Fed 
funds rate after December 10th, 2025 event, I have a bet or market for each one of these. So I have a bet for 5.25%, 5%, 4.75%, and so on. And I can see the odds of each of those bets. Now, what we wanted to do for our semantic matching to compare these Fed rate cut bets between Kalshi and Polymarket, uh, we need to figure out how to request every single market. So we wanted to study every single uh, market on this entire thing. And so since there's tens of thousands of markets and events um, on Kalshi, what we wanted to do is add uh, this request cache library. And this allows us to efficiently like create a session and make repeated requests to uh, basically scrape uh, the entire site and collect this big data set of tens of thousands uh, of events, right? And so what this does is we're using TQDM here. Um, and this allows us to have a little progress bar as we're uh, scraping the site. And so what we do is just show progress. And what we're doing is in this loop, we're requesting the events. We're getting 200 at a time and we're keeping track of each page with this cursor. And then we're, we're continuing until it's done and showing a little progress bar as, as we scrape this data. And then this request cache will store uh, results in a little SQLite database here, and that'll all get cached. And so if you're running like these overnight scraping jobs, you might want something that uh, makes sure that it can uh, restart if something fails. So you might have, you might be scraping uh, some data set that takes, you know, minutes or hours, right? And so you want to be able to pick up where you left off, and this is what it allows you to do. And so I am running this. And you see it says fetching markets. And so I'm getting 200, 200, 200, and so forth. And it's showing the progress as it goes. And, and so this will take a little while and we'll have like tens of thousands of events here. All right, so you can see this is now done and we have hundreds of thousands of event records. And so we start with this events at empty and then we fetch 200 at a time and we're gradually extending this events list, right? And so you see it's now finished. And so remember each event has markets nested under them. So in the, in the markets key, and so what we're gonna do now is loop through all the events, uh, get what's in the markets key, loop through all those, and then we're gonna build this list of, of markets, right? And then once we have that market list, what we wanna do is just save that to a file. And so like I mentioned, we're running a number of experiments on all of this data. And every time we do that, like tomorrow, next week, I don't wanna have to run all of this again to refetch and hit cow sheet uh, hundreds of times to collect this data set. I wanna collect it uh, once. And then what we're gonna do is cache it to a file. And so what we can do is uh, we uh, create a timestamp for today, and we're just gonna save a directory called Kalshi, uh, save a file called Kalshi Markets with whatever today is as a JSON file here. And then tomorrow, you know, let's pretend we have a little cron job running, a scheduled job, and then we just fetch uh, that day's market data. And then we store that in a little JSON file. And then so uh, we open that file and just dump all of these markets inside. And you can see I'm printing out uh, the length of markets right here, okay? And then when we wanna do study later, what we're gonna do is just take whatever file uh, for the day that we're studying, and we're just gonna read the JSON into a pandas data frame. So you see I imported uh, pandas right there, and we're using read JSON, and we get this Cauchy data frame. And then when I run this, you see we have this big data frame that's in a table and easier to read than that big blob of JSON. So you see we have tickers, event tickers, uh, the titles of all of these markets uh, and all these attributes expanded out. And since it's a pandas data frame, we can uh, filter things down as well. So I could uh, filter to all of the ones that have a certain title. I could uh, filter by ticker and so forth. And it's just gonna be very easy for us to search and sort or apply any functions that uh, pandas makes available uh, to a data frame, right? All right, to finish this video, I want to quickly touch on WebSocket so that you can get some real-time data uh, from Couchy. Similar to the last video, you want to uh, install the Python WebSockets package, so I pip install that. Uh, then we need to connect to the Couchy WebSocket that's documented in their WebSockets API. And so this is their uh, market data feed right here, and there's the WebSocket address. So we have that in a constant up here. Now this one's a little, I can't show you this on the camera, uh, but we need to do is get an authentication token in order to subscribe uh, to this WebSocket feed. And to do that, you actually authenticate with your username and password. And so I just have it as a dictionary right here with your account, your password. Don't share that stuff with anyone. What I would do is either, uh, I would use either uh, an environment variable or put it inside of a Google secret right there. And then you could load that in. And what's gonna happen is you use the Python request library 
you would create a post request to log in here, you pass it your JSON payload, and what that'll give you is a token. And so you'll see I use it in the headers to the WebSocket connection. So I set a dictionary here called headers, and it has author authorization, and this is what's called a bearer token. So I do bearer, and in my S string, I do response token. So this is gonna respond with a dictionary or a JSON uh, response, and then you're gonna access the token key right there. And that's how you're gonna authenticate. Um, and so for my WebSocket, what I wanna do is uh, connect to the WebSocket. So there's my Couchy WebSocket that we defined here, and then we pass it in those headers, and that header is our authorization. And then once I connect to that WebSocket successfully, I can send it a message in order to subscribe to a feed. So in this case, I'm subscribing to the trade channel here. But if you scroll down through the uh, Kaushi documentation, you can see there's a number of subscription channels. There's order book delta, ticker, trade, and fill here. And there's examples of what each of those uh, payloads look like. And so what I'm doing is just sending uh, uh, a trade message here. So the channels is trade. And I send that message, you know, WebSocket send over the socket. And then I just keep waiting to receive uh, WebSocket data. And so in a loop here, I'm just receiving messages and just printing them on the screen for now. And in the future, we'll receive those messages and then we can actually respond to them. So we can respond to the incoming market data that's coming in in real time and maybe programmatically place a trade, store them in a database or do whatever we want. Maybe just send an email to ourselves when something changes, however you want to process those events. And so I'm gonna go off the screen real quick and put in my username and password and then get my authentication token. And then I'm gonna run this so that you can see what the actual uh, data looks like. All right, now I'm gonna run this and now I have a response token. You can see uh, it's logging on the screen that I sent the trade message right there, uh, right there. And then you see received message. So it responds saying you are now subscribed. And if all is well, you should start to see uh, some messages come back and you see there's a received message uh, for a trade, and it looks like it's a rate cut count for the December uh, 2024 meeting. And so what I can do here is actually go back, I said I wasn't gonna do this data frame, but I can go to this data frame and filter it down. And so my data frame is called Kaushi there, and I have a, a market ticker. So let's see if we can filter down the market ticker. So I'm gonna do a Kaushi, um, what do I do? Um, ticker, ticker, or Kaushi. Uh, ticker equal equal like that and let's see if we can find that row and then you see we have a rate cut count for December 24th there number of rate cuts in 2024 is is what they're betting on and so you know that's a trade that came in for a particular market and I think that's it for now. Let me know what you're thinking about this topic so far. I'm gonna keep going this for a while, and but I do want to continue to gauge interest uh, from the people out here watching. Um, and if you're interested in what me and my friend are building, we're starting to build some financial tools in the upcoming months. We're gonna put them in fintrack.ai. And if there's anything you've always wanted to see in a financial tool or market data or a tr financial tracker, uh, fill it out and I'll let you know when it's out. And I appreciate any feedback you can give there. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.